everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dance Talk Realness, a podcast where we discuss all nuances concerning education and dance, because a dance experience is an experience worth talking about. Today, I'm welcoming back my lovely guest, Miss Marie. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. And we will shortly jump into all the things, but first, our quote of today. Today, our quote is from David Bowie. And my kids always want to say David Bowie because we live in Bowie. And I'm like, baby, that's not how you say that man's name. <laughs> so quote is from David Bowie. Everything we look at and choose is some way of expressing how we want to be perceived. Which when I initially chose that, I didn't know what our topic was going to be. And I was like, yo, that was speak it into existence. <laughs> yes, connection. Perfectly. <laughs> fits perfectly so before we jump all the way into that part of it how has quarantine been treating you oh man um so like honestly for me and but there's like two halves to it the first half is like I literally feel like I'm on a wonderful vacation where I get to take two hour naps every day and I'm still getting paid and you know I get to cook and and the day is just like essentially for the most part mine to do what I will. And for me, that's really a big stress relief. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert at heart and I also like suffer from anxiety and depression. So for me, this kind of contact, but at the same time, like safe isolation I'm cool with like I'm I'm doing okay and knowing like you know I'm blessed right now know like my family and friends are safe and so I don't like necessarily have to worry about that that is great um the other half of it is like that financial uncertainty Mm -hmm. is very scary um so you know right now because the school year is still going on I'm still you know blessed to be employed but there's there's you know no guarantee about what's going to happen in the summer. And normally in the summer, you know, I'd be making bank from summer camps because all these parents are like, I got to put my kids somewhere, go dance, you know, (laughs) but we may not have that this summer. Um, So that's kind of, you know, and a girl ain't seen her stimulus check yet. So (laughs) Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. But I think the I think the number one thing to remember, which is also really important, something I try to do, is to get off the news, to stop listening to the news, Mm -hmm. and to to stop listening to every single day, you know, updates. Because in all actuality, things, it will be okay. We are going to come out of this okay, different, more aware change like there's no there's not going to be a normal there will be a new normal but we're not going back to normal but i think you know if you spend your days with cnn on the tv 24 7 you're gonna go stir crazy it's just not good for your mental health no it is not it's overwhelming um yes full disclosure i don't be watching the news at all <laughs> i'm like somebody will update me if it's something i really need to know I was like but yeah. i cannot that's a rabbit hole i don't want to go down i don't want to get sucked nope. into because i'm like it's difficult enough processing a lot of this and i don't need to add nothing to it it's really okay i'm good off of that <laughs> exactly exactly that that to me was my whole thing is like we know what we have to do. I'm going to follow those guidelines and I'm going to just do what I have to do and not let Mm -hmm. sometimes outside noises, like no matter how well CNN might mean, they still have one agenda, viewer ratings and Mm -hmm. they hate Trump. And as like, even as like, as much as I agree with that, it's still very biased, you know, and that can, that bias can get toxic too, just as much as like, far right wing conservative bias can get mad toxic you know it's just like yeah like what is it when they say it's like um like you're talking in an echo chamber and you're only hearing the things that you already think you already agree with and while yes it's nice to have affirmation sometimes i think um some people kind of skip over the fact that it is beneficial to have someone contradict you if for no other reason, then that can actually strengthen 
your argument for you. That yeah. if you're always agreeing with me, then I'm never pushed to learn more or to grow. I'm just like, yeah, exactly. we got it. We're good. But if you're disagreeing, it's like, oh, okay, well, I think this. And you're like, okay, well, why? I'm like, oh, good question. <laughs> well, let me see if I can articulate that. And if I can't, then either I need to reevaluate or I need to do some more research and see, okay, well, I still believe this, but let me strengthen my case that okay. for nothing else, I just like to prove to myself that I'm right. <laughs> like, I don't really have to convince anybody else. You can come along on the ride with me, but <laughs> eh, if you don't believe it, then, you know, I'll be all right. I still right. Don't really believe it, but I should be able to clearly articulate why. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Now with um, teaching, because well, where you where you are currently, that's would that would that count as private, or how does it's not public? Yeah, it's private. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it's you know parents pay and they choose to go, and it's we're uh, city dance is considered a uh, non for profit, mm-hmm. as is Sidwell. I'm pretty sure, but still private institution so not government like we get grants but we're not government funded yeah um has there been any dialogue involving um the instructors i guess i would say about potential steps moving forward because i know you were mentioning summer is is a hundred percent going to be different um i can't fathom everything going like right back to normal in June, July, and everyone's sending their kids happily off to camps and, and that, sessions. No, no. And there, there hasn't been talk, mm-hmm. but the number one thing that I've also been thinking about, especially in this uppity area of the Northeast, <laughs> yeah. you know, this pocket, parents aren't going to want to send their kids right mm-hmm. away just because it's open. These parents would be like, hell no, nah. I'm yeah, not sending true. my child out there when I don't know you've been tested and who is you and what is your, you know, like. Yeah, because I am that parent, so. Right. And <laughs> you know what? But I feel the same way. It's like, especially a summer camp where you don't know the kids, because summer yeah. camp is not like your year round thing where you know the kids, you know the parents, these are kids that you see every week. No, 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 no. Yeah. My kids are coming from everywhere. <laughs> And we don't need wear rooms. Like, y'all good. Y'all stay over there with it. Oh. And I don't think any of the cities or states, and they will need one, have a system set up about how you let kids back into school or programs because the most important mm-hmm. thing is they could be carriers. Like, you have to have some kind of background checking before you just open schools up again. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, that's, I think that's, I that's don't, the, the biggest thing is that they could be caring and you don't know (laughs) and I mean and that's with anybody at this point in the game that it's the not knowing until stuff is happening and then it's like okay well hell I got it now like (laughs) me personally me personally I think those of us that do not have it we're either we're just asymptomatic to it. Like, I think all, mm. I think you, me, everybody in that Atlas theater, just everybody in this area, I think we've all been exposed mm. to it. I just don't yeah. think that we have reacted. I, you know, I think we've been the asymptomatic people that it just hasn't really hit. Um, mm. that, you know what? I didn't think about that. Like, cause we were hundred percent. We're out in these streets right before everything really kind of shut down because it was yeah. happening before it shut down. Hmm. Good point. Yeah. It was here for a long time. Yeah. It probably, you know, it probably just, I think a lot of people who either went to the hospital with the flu or pneumonia probably had it. Mm. No, my, my mom's friend, she, and this was back in early February. She was, interning with uh, had an intern who was from uh, Japan or South Korea somewhere Mm -hmm. and she got she got the coronavirus way before it became a thing you know a thing and you know before there was testing and all of that she had a horrible cough you know couldn't breathe very well all of this like she she legit had it 
And this person, no, Japan. This person okay. came from Japan. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, well, she got it. That means 12 other people have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Because we didn't know. We were just out here in these streets. <laughs> and like I mean, you said, like, some were either asymptomatic. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Successful sold out show before yes. this pandemic. <laughs> because I cannot fathom had our show been scheduled any later. I can't. child. I don't even want to think of that. Like, like when I say we were blessed, child, so blessed. Like I don't know who was looking over us and sold out and sold out. It's like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> like yo. Like, the yeah. craziness, but craziness, yeah, I agree. But so blessed, I, man. So now I'm wondering because, hmm. I mean, I've been sick within this time frame, but I just assumed it was something else. Because I was like, "Well, I don't think I have these symptoms," but you never know. Hmm. Everybody in my house seemed to be fine, so we're just gonna keep it moving. My friend Jen, who did the costumes, mm-hmm. she said. And I, again, I don't know if she went to the doctor or not, but she said she and her daughter for the entire winter break were out with the flu, like out mm. cold, and she was pregnant. And I'm like, it, you know, now I'm sitting back wondering. Was that the flu? The flu. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm like, like um, folks been getting t- took out by the flu too, though. That's been an ongoing situation like the flu ain't no joke for real for real so it's just it's not one thing it's going to be another but hopefully there are plans being put in place that like you said we won't go back to quote-unquote normal but to some sense of normalcy (laughs) (laughs) that's the plan put in place (laughs) To a mail in ballot. How many Look. times do you need to mail one? Because for I real. <laughs> Look, thank you. I was like, how many can I get? I'll mail that many. I'll just keep well, mailing. Is she them. sick? I can do hers for her. Yes, like, her I got her. her. She got I her. got her. You tell me what you want. You said not him. Okay, let's put the other. <laughs> okay, I got you. I can do that part. I, I can do it. Oh, okay, so our main topic of the day is black hair in ballet so um again you are my one of my ballet experts because anyone who knows me know it ain't me who is an expert in that genre but what are some i guess things you have seen dealing with how we deal with hair and how that fits into the structure that is ballet. We can start there. And oh, class, man. performance, all, wherever you want to jump in, because it all um, is connected. I would say ballet, it gives this thing about hair is one of a prime example about, which is starting to change. But like when I was training about how the rigidity of ballet for solely European Americans, Mm -hmm. because there's, there's no, you know, you have one option. Well, you two, a bun or a a French, uh, what is that thing called? French roll. A twist, you know, French twist where you twist the hair up and then you put it on top. Um, you know, something like this is, is nice, but it's like, you can only have one, you you need one kind of hair type in order for those to be really doable in a way in which it looks acceptable within the ballet community. Um, that was like one of the things that I noticed. So like, for example, a couple summers, I went to a couple summer intensives and I tried to do, 
I did braids, like long, you know, braids with um, extensions put in. And it was incredibly impossible to put my hair in a bun and still be able to like spot two times and do a double because my head was so heavy. You know, it's just, and that wasn't my hair's fault. And it wasn't the style of hair that I chose. It was the fact that, like I said, it, it's like, it really highlights the rigidity that is ballet and, and how it is, has not been built, you know, understandably so based on its history, it hasn't been built to be accustomed to people of different um, ethnicities and backgrounds. So that, that to me is the first thing that, like I said, that I would notice, you know, it's like, I, I didn't, understand anything about my natural curl pattern until I was a junior in college and I you know was realizing that I didn't need to have my hair straight you know but all I knew how to do was slick it back in a low little poof um you know my entire time growing up I while I never uh, permed my hair I got uh uh, what is it? I went to a Dominican hair salon and got blowouts every two weeks. So my hair was like heat damage beyond. <laughs> yeah. There was no coming back from that. <laughs> so I had to have straight hair in order to dance because it was impossible. Like I said, it's impossible to do ballet, physically impossible to do ballet with braids, like heavy braids, you know. And then, like I said, within that ballet society where you've got European American teachers, they don't necessarily think that you having cornrows or an Afro puff, no matter how nice and neat it looks, is acceptable mm-hmm. in ballet class. You know, it's it's not the look, and you don't. It, and so there, you know, that to me, I don't even know if I answered your question. But that's okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so one of the things, because like my um, daughter has had to do this, I've done it. Um, so braids and dancing in general, it's, I hesitate to say not possible, but there is a level of difficulty added to your life <laughs> when you throw off your balance like that. Um, I know my, as much as she loves having braids, um, the last time she was getting her hair done, she was like, okay, but can they not be that long? And I'm like, what you mean? I was like, first of all, your hair is long. So by default, the braids will be long. She's like, I can't dance. Like, I can't, I can't do any of the turns. Like my head, I can't spot. And I was like, well, you know, sis, I'm, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, and it's not necessarily... I don't, I don't, I think the issue that I have is how it becomes problematic for others because it's not the look and it doesn't, it's not aesthetically what history has deemed appropriate. And I'm like, I mean, I'll be straight up with you. I would never, even now, even now, and I hate this because there's nothing wrong with it and it, it gets a bad rep. I would never walk into a ballet class with cornrows. I wouldn't mm. do it. I w- wouldn't do it. Not because I don't love cornrows and not because I would never cornrow my hair, but because I already know the look I'm going to get from the teacher and I'm doing ballet and I it's been ingrained in my brain that those two things cannot <laughs> they can't coexist. <laughs> they can't coexist or bantu knots. I would ne- you know what I mean? But in my opinion, those two African American or Afro hair, Afrocentric hairstyles would be perfect for dance because they're much more lightweight than long, heavy braids. But you would never go in there. You know. And you know what? Oh, well, first of all, I wouldn't do the bantu knots because I suck at them, and they be looking good on other people, and it never looks good on me. I I have yeah. let that go. <laughs> um, I just accept that as a shortcoming that I have. But um, I will say I think I have seen Bantu knots in a ballet class. She didn't care. She was about the business. No. I, I have never seen like legit cornrows, like not into a bun. Right. <laughs> like I'm just right. like, I'm wearing cornrows. Like I'm out right. here. I, I right. don't think I have, 
which is interesting. Now, I will say I have had the privilege of also taking ballet classes where they were trying to get away from that narrative. Um, But I would say early on, it was bun for days. And, you know, thankfully that was already a style just from um, marching band and stuff that my hair was always in a bun anyway, because that was part of the uniform. But it, it was, as I think about it, there was maybe one or two people who didn't have to wear their hair in a bun because their hair just wasn't long enough. And that was about it. Yeah. Yep. I, I like to believe that the um, perspective is shifting continuously and is becoming more inclusive. But I think so. I think so. It's still, I think there, even with that shift, there's still a stigma attached because just in general, there is a stigma attached to our type of hair and yeah because it it also the stigma is the complete opposite of what most people consider ballerinas to be Mm -hmm. long skinny blonde or even sometimes brunette ethereal looking women Mm -hmm. you know who who float on air and who move you know like i said float on air and move like a feather and are elegant and and light not just in your skin tone, but like, you know, like the gestures I'm doing now, very mm-hmm. light. And so you automatically don't associate that with black women to begin with yeah. in this society, unfortunately. Um, and so, you know, the hair, our hairstyles clash just from the get go. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, go ahead, be out there with an afro. By default, I would love it. By right. default, I would, I would love all it. I can see is strength. Right. Like that's it. Yes. <laughs> like. Yeah. And like you know, for me, I can see how that strength can also be seen within softness, um, because that that is continuously a trait that they try to take away from us. And I'm like, but exactly. Yep. <laughs> like, but to why? I was <laughs> like, why? Right. But to why right. can I not be also soft and dainty? Why? Why can I not? But there is. I'm trying to think of the best way to say this sentence. There is the a negative association with strength with strength and blackness. Um, it's particularly black women because I don't know about the black male experience because I'm not one, but. Exactly. There is an inherent strength that we have that has been demonized and turned against us in a way. Yeah. And our hair has always been a part of that conversation. Yeah. Um, and that, I think that's too, the part. I think we, you brought up an interesting thing because I think that that strength is also a gender thing because. Mm-hmm women in ballet were never are not supposed to be strong we're you know they're supposed to be partnered and lifted and the princess who runs and hides Mm -hmm. and needs to get saved and gets picked up but there's no strength there's obviously strength in what she's doing right it's freaking hard and and she makes it look easy right but it's really freaking hard and you got to be strong that we're not we're not questioning that we're simply questioning the actual gender role that classical ballet, we're talking, you know, classical ballet, mm-hmm. the roots of it is another thing that for black women is hard because like you said, that strong black woman negative stereotype that has been placed on us clashes with another negative stereotype that has just been placed on women in the ballet community, which is you're supposed to be the sleeping beauty, but you can never be the prince that's strong and saves the day sort of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just automatically um, a clash of interests. <laughs> yeah, big like, time, big time. Which yeah, yeah, they can have that, because <laughs> like, <laughs> I love seeing strong women dancing. Mm-hmm. I 
Love it. And that's not a slight to anyone who doesn't feel that that's like their aesthetic. Um, yeah. But that's one of my favorite things. I think my top thing is just to see like a man who can dance. Like that is just like, yes, just out <laughs> here. Like that's neither here nor there for this conversation. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that's number one. But yeah. a woman who doesn't need to be saved and I actually really love seeing women do partnering and lifts. And I feel more people need to be about that business. Um, I always stress my students out with it because I'm like, yeah, no, you need to be able to do this. And they're like, mm, but, but why? <laughs> like, I can. I was like, no, you can. I was like, you can. scientifically it's speaking, important. we can figure this out. <laughs> like there, yeah. there is a point of balance that we can find. We just have Absolutely. to find it. Absolutely. And so it's, I think, again, it's the fact that that stereotype doesn't only exist in that realm. It, it, it just pervades every single aspect of being for Black people, for Black women, and for Black women dancers. Um, yeah. And I don't know how necessarily to tackle it on a big scale. Like I know within the classroom, there are things we can do. Like I've, um, I have originally been very much a proponent for bun. Slick that joke, joker back. Like I hate, I don't like people dancing with their hair out. It drives me insane. It is just a sake of, I like very clean, lines and a very clean look so I can pay attention to what your body is doing. And it may just be because I get distracted. It's like, oh, shiny. <laughs> and I'm like, your hair is everywhere. And so I'm sitting right. here thinking like, how can you see? <laughs> and I'm no longer paying attention to the movement. So that, that, that is a personal preference. But I have done pieces where I'm like, okay, well, no, I want your hair out. And they're like, well, do you want it straight? And I'm like, nah, for what? I want your hair out. Like, so figure out how you're going to make that, navigate that, but do that thing. And I think it brings a different quality to the work. First of all, you have to be able to dance around what your hair is doing. And that's, that's for any hair type, any hair texture. Because again, I say, I'm like, how can you see? I hate dancing with my hair out. Um, I had two, four, one of my friends, his uh, master thesis, and I will never forget it because I was like, first, I couldn't see. And that's all I could think of. I was like, I'm going to go off the edge of this stage and I'm going to die. Yeah. And I don't, like, who's going to call my family? Who's going to let them know? Right. But it served the purpose that he wanted, his vision for the performance. And so I think that it is possible if we start that earlier and just be a little more open to the idea of looking at the different ways that forms. Yeah. Yeah. That that could help because again, I know part of my bias is because that's what all I knew for so long is right. that it, all, it has to be tamed. It has to be slipped straight back or you and have it's not even just part. tamed. It has to be straight. straight. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's where the change has to start in that, like, like I said, my junior year of college, I was like, oh, okay, my hair is natural and curly, but it's slicked back out of my face and it looks neat. What's the problem? You know, or like I said, kids who come in with a, a full set of, you know, classic cornrows, you good to go. Your hair is out of your face and it's neat. And I think it's like we have to change that and say, like, yeah. there are absolutely other forms of hairstyles that are neat, pulled back, not crazy looking you know and art should be considered acceptable but they're not i think that's that's where yes um yeah. it's that idea of it being unacceptable correct and that 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 part blows me because yeah. um i don't see why having it in a puff is not okay like you said is, is it, 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 it 
Right. I think it goes back to, I think, one of the bigger issues within our community that we have to tackle, which is so hard to tackle because it's been ingrained, I think, into our DNA is colorism. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. And, and hair is a direct association yes. with colorism, although inaccurately, because the number of people who are whiter looking than me with nappier hair than mine, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, I, so <laughs> I hate True. that sense that like, if you light, you got good hair. No, no, no you don't. Not. Oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> let me just go on record as saying I am fully aware of the benefits I get from being on the lighter end. I know I can benefit from colorism. I am aware. Yeah. I have um, plentiful times. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. I'm not even gonna lie. It's <laughs> <laughs> like chat, like when I tell you, and that was something that I was aware of very early on. Now, was I aware of the problematic aspects of it early on? Not at all. But early on, I knew that hey, me being lighter is a quote unquote good thing. Oh, I can get this. I can get away with this. You oh. get what you need done. Done. You get to do what you got. <laughs> but there is a misunderstanding like the the hair thing always gets me cuz no one ever believes me cuz i okay so this is like first world problem <laughs> and i full, fully accept it but the oddest thing to me has always been like with my hair that it's like oh well you have that good and i was like well act actually <laughs> it it's a, it's a little rough up in here it's a little bit. <laughs> what covers up for it is that I'm light. And you have in your mind that by default, since I am, then that means I have this supposed good hair. I'm like, well, first of all, does my hair grow regularly? Yes, then it's good. Like my daughter is only like a couple shades darker than me. She's still on the lighter end of the spectrum, I would say. She said she's a nice tannish brown. Um Hair texture, completely different than mine. She got her daddy hair. Yeah. And I'm like, would I say she has good hair? Yes, because it grows. So now, if it were damaged and all jacked up, then now that's another conversation. But again, I can understand how me coming from this position can be taken a certain way. And I, I get it. I respect it. Um but I have friends who like, that's the ongoing joke with them about me and my hair. And I'm like, well, first of all, you don't do my hair. You've only ever seen it the way I want y'all to see it. You ever right. really only see it slicked back. <laughs> like, right. And you know, water will do that for most people. Get you some water, some gel, some hair grease, whatever you need. You can make a lot of miracles happen. <laughs> right. But, but I'm I think like, like, it's like, also that's, long that's- and it gets weighed down by it being it's length yeah out. so i'm like my length will have you fooled but i'm like no don't believe it <laughs> right. my hair be lying <laughs> it be out here in these streets but i mean you just... see my hair it, it's it's the epitome of of that thing that i really do not like you know I, I i feel like it does such a disservice to how we as a community can grow because it pits us against one another it does you know i go i ain't gonna lie to you i got good ass hair i do yeah. you know <laughs> i got that hair like, <laughs> not right? to be like that but you do <laughs> like okay curl you know? pattern i see you out here <laughs> all right but i run hate, the comb through I, yeah you know it's like i hate that i don't hate i love my hair you know i really do i love my hair i love it curly i love it straight like i love its versatility mm-hmm. but i also hate that it brings so much ire and self-loathing from Mm. people within a community that are supposed to you know we are supposed to together lift each other up but instead it's something that tears us down and i think like i said we go back way back house nigga field nigga and it's it's been ingrained in our and that's the problem it's it's ingrained at this point ingrained Um, because even when you can see it and acknowledge it it's still something that like it, it is always an active 
action for me to say, okay, but no, <laughs> like that's, yeah. we're not, I'm not it's a form making of these survival. assumptions off of hair. Like, yeah, but it's, like I said, like my, my grandmother and her people, like it is a form, you use that to survive. It determines yeah. how you are going to literally not get hung, strung up by a tree or what have you. Because yeah. if you could pass for white, you were, go- you know, considered, yeah. right? Or if you were just light enough, I ain't gonna mess with you. Versus, you know, it, it's, it, 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 and I think, I hate to say it, but a part of that is is the responsibility, which we ain't never gonna get, of of the people who this country was founded on to recognize its faults and that that is something that they built mm-hmm. up and put into our brains. Is it our job to dispel it? Absolutely. But our society and the success of how we succeed in society is built around that. And we ain't make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that is a conversation. I don't remember what I was talking about, but that general idea came up. And I remember going back and forth with somebody because they're like, well, black people need to do. I was like, well, first of all, it is not my responsibility to get you to understand that you're wrong. I can give you information, but I'm going to need you to put in some work because you did this. If you come in my house and you flip my table over, don't you look at me talking about some, oh, well, you going to pick that up? Hell no, I'm not picking it up. You just oh, flipped well, my I stuff over. the bottom of it. So what are you so mad about the fact that I flipped it? Because you freaking you flipped the table over. You flipped my over. table if like, you don't come pick this table up right now. You fix what you did. You fix oh, it. Well, I, I will gladly tell you where the things go on the table. I'll tell right. you how to place them. Right. But you need to pick that up. You did that. And so I'm I, like, that, I take okay. issue. Like, it's not our responsibility. I take not issue our responsibility. with that line of thought. Like, not that, That's either. like saying, you know, oh, well, slavery is not here anymore and you have equal rights. So get over it. I'm like, ooh, if you don't. Like, mm. oh. <laughs> because if that's how it worked, it would have happened already. Like, it does not work that way. And for folks to just want to bypass it. Right. It's like, excuse me. Um, a whole I, I did not do slavery. This was not me. This, this y'all, y- your entire life, the success that you have had from generation to generation has been built off the backs of us. You mm-hmm. cannot villainize the victim all because you don't want to look in the mirror and be like, oh, shit, we did some bad stuff. We fake good people all the time. Like, <laughs> just, just like legit yeah. like it's really okay to be like you know what i am benefiting off of generations of taking advantage of a segment of this here population yeah. okay what can i do to help make change like no nope. right. okay i think the misconception is that a handout is being asked for now are there some people asking for a handout? Yes, sure. That's Absolutely. but that's everybody. That don't really matter who right. you are. That just happened. Stimulus check. Look, sis. <laughs> because yes. But what I don't understand is how people don't see that in the bigger picture, the I don't I would say, I would venture to say this is an assumption, maybe. The majority are not asked for a handout. I'm not saying give me anything. I'm saying don't keep penalizing me. Like you, you, you can't tell me that everything is fair and everything is equal when it's not. I'm like the system that was in place when everything was like a complete and utter shit show is still in place. Like it's still the same system. So you can't tell me that just because you changed some words and you modified a couple laws that all of a sudden everything's okay. No, it is still the same system. You just found a new way to do these things. And I don't understand the confusion. Like I am confused by their confusion. Like, why don't you get this? And I mean, I guess if it doesn't really impact your life, then you have no need to understand, but why don't you want to be better? I think the biggest thing because I, I honestly, what I have seen is, and this has just been since the age of social media where everything is now visible, it's one of fear, mm-hmm. a fear of what doing, you know, doing what we talked about will, how that will shake up and it will shake things up because you're, that, all of this is a form of control. 
It's a form of control. It's a form of power. And admitting that means that you take off, you know, and you're giving the power back to the people who are oppressed. Because when the person who admits to oppressing you admits that it was wrong, they no longer have that power over you, right? And no one, just like that colorism has been ingrained in our heads, that's been ingrained in all of these kids, you know. Yeah. They're not going to admit to that. You know, and what you talked about, though, with regards to handout is, is very, like, do I see a lot of people sitting around being like, well, ain't nobody do this for me yet and this and that? I'm like, get off your ass and go make it happen for yourself and work yeah. hard and stop using what is in actuality and rightfully so, you know, something that works against us as an excuse to not do anything. Mm-hmm. I 100% believe that. But I also believe that sometimes it doesn't matter. No matter how hard you work, doesn't matter how good you are. There is that you you are always going to to have that thing come up against you, and yeah. so it's it's such a hard thing to balance, you know. It, it's it is. Yeah, and I don't know how we got off this, but it's yeah, like I don't went know, to- but <laughs> it went. <laughs> it went. But here, I think I think I can tie it back. I think I can. Okay. Um, okay. So I actually so I wrote about that that idea of that fear of the norm being challenged and that like you said it once you if you accept that challenge nothing can go back like it's going to be a wild ride from there right and there's a fear of not only losing control but a fear of the unknown because you don't know what's going to happen and i think that that same fear is what bled into dance. Yes. Because if we allow, quotation fingers, (laughs) if we allow these changes, if we allow more dancers of color, if we allow them to wear these different hairstyles, how is that going to change the field? How is that going to impact dance? And more specifically to this conversation, how will that, impact and change ballet because we're changing a norm and i think that fear is part of the big problem that honestly i think it's change also is part good. Of, yeah and and i think it's like to bare bones is part of human nature yeah you know, if you are if you're an animal who is trying to survive every single day you're going to do what works for you and you're going to stay with that. Mm-hmm. And you're not about to embark on change, especially if that change, you have no idea yeah. how that's going to turn out for you, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think you're totally, you know, I think especially in ballet with European America, well, if we start making this change, then we're going to open this up to an entirely different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? you know, group of people who are then going to start enjoying ballet and what's that going to do to the quality? Mm -hmm. I've heard that before. What's that going to do to the quality of the art form? And speaking of, then that, that brings to mind, um, like the, we'll say offshoots of ballet that have been occurring, um, and combining with other forms that, whoo, child, folks be mad. <laughs> they be big mad too. And it's like, it's really going to be okay. Now, yeah. in fairness, I really do understand the idea behind, this sounds horrible to say out loud, <laughs> but the idea behind maintaining the purity of a form. I get that. That's not horrible. Not at all. But I also get that things change anyway, because I'm like classical ballet as we know it, is it exactly what it was when it first started? No. So I'm like shifts happen, which. And I think too. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I think too, the other thing that like people have to realize is, especially black women and black men, we're not asking to come into the ballet world and all of a sudden turn it into Alonzo King lines and that's it. Yeah. No, we're asking to tell, we're asking to come in to show you 
we can do sleep scene beauty, leave it as it is and not change a damn thing about it, but to just like star in it and like do it and do it well. Swan Lake, Swan Lake, Romeo and Juliet, all the classics. We are more than capable of doing every yes. single one of like uh, Balanchine's concerto number, whatever the hell, you know, who said we wanted to change it? We're just trying to show that just because we have an Afro puff doesn't mean that we can't get in there and like do this beautifully. Yeah. And keep it as it is. And then, yeah, and see, that goes back to that idea of the norm being challenged because then there's sometimes there's assumptions with that. Right. And there is that, I think there is that assumption that, okay, well, if we let you in though, you're going Power. to change the, yeah. And it's like, loosen those reins a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm legit just trying to learn this piece. Like, that's all I'm trying to do right now. That's it. I don't want I don't want that much from you. Right. Now, in some respects, yes, we do. But there's it's kind of like this all or nothing mentality that I'm like, well, life isn't really like that. And I mean, I'd be here for some all or nothing about some stuff. But (laughs) on a big scale, many things fall somewhere in between. And each thing needs to be evaluated against itself and not something else. Right. And I, yeah, you know what? That actually explains a lot of things in my head (laughs) now. That just, that just made some things click. That I'm like, you know, so many of the people who are so concerned about letting us into certain spaces or being open to changes is that they're comparing what they think will happen to something that has happened. That they're like, well, Absolutely. this happened over here. So that's what's going to happen. It's like, no, honey, that's a completely different situation. Exactly. Like, I'm telling you what would happen here. Like, just right. hear me out. And it's that fear of I'm going to lose control and don't let what happened over here have been like a complete and utter shit show for real, for real. Then they were like, well, no, it's going to go wrong. It's like, but have you listened? Have you heard me out? Like, it, it's all case by case. All case by case. And I like, think too, especially within American society, it's it's that power and control is directly related to money. Oh yes. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, if we start letting in what society considers to not be acceptable, especially in the upper chalon to the free free ballet, <laughs> we will not be selling tickets anymore. And mm-hmm. I don't want, you know, the horrible part is them probably thinking I don't want Bonk Weekly up in there sitting there with her soda pop and smacking gum yeah. trying to watch a show in the theater. And I'm like, well, you know what? I don't want Karen up on the neighborhood block trying to be like, that's not sanitary. So we can have it both ways. <laughs> like we, we can all be mad. How about that? Okay. We can all be mad in here together. You know, How about you it? You can't barbecue out here. This is not permitted. Well, Michael. They didn't let now me into here. the theater with my own snacks because I didn't want to pay five dollars for a bag of peanuts. Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> for real. And I mean, oh. and that's the you know what I have been guilty of. Okay, well actually, I just don't like people. So let's start there. So there's <laughs> that. I just don't like being around people. So me being in an audience is already rough as an experience. But what I noticed. Um, And I I remember catching myself thinking, and I was like, wow, you might need to address this at some point internally, is that, and I know a lot of other Black people who do this too, is that when I'm in a space, and there ain't a lot of us, first of all, I look to find us, (laughs) because I'm like, please tell me, I'm not the one fleck of pepper in the salt shaker, like, just let me know, it ain't just me, (laughs) like, let me, let me find you. But then my right. next immediate thought is, please don't do anything out of pocket. To embarrass me. Please yeah. don't. I was like, because Blackness is not monolithic. I wrote that at least five times in my last paper. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know how else to say that to people. Like, we're not all the same. We don't all have the same experiences. But that being said, I am also very aware that if we both go somewhere, and you cut up while we're there, folks are gonna turn and look at me like, you gonna, you gonna talk to your, right. and I could right. not know you. And they right. gonna be like, so you gonna, I'm like, I don't know her. 
like, dang, first of all, you're assuming that we all know each other, which is not a thing. But I'm like, I'm not responsible for somebody else. But at the same time, <laughs> I'd be up in there like, please don't. Please don't. Right. Because child. Yes. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. 100% and it's like, agree. what do you, like, how do you even begin to like really process and deal with that and like work through it? Because I'm like, I can acknowledge how problematic that is, that that's my like, next thought is please don't do something to embarrass me. And I'm like, I don't know them. Why would I be embarrassed? Yep. Because if somebody wide up in there cutting up, I'm not embarrassed about that. I'd be like, Ooh, y'all get y'all folks. So you ain't got a hillbilly up in there embarrassing you. So, so I'm like, man, and I, I at least actively try to, if I catch myself doing it, be like, okay, but truly <laughs> this is a completely different person. They ain't got nothing to do with you. Now, if they're with me, then I'm saying something to you because I'm like, Look, totally different. I will leave you. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I will find another I would seat. Too. <laughs> like, I would too. Don't be, get up and walk away. <laughs> But also, I will say, there, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. Shut up if we are watching a show. Like, it is not a sporting event. And, oh, my God, I had a um, department chair who <laughs> I used to appreciate when she would say it. And I had um, my former supervisor, she would say it also. It's not a sporting event. Like, we're not outside. We're not doing all of that. Could you please no. calm it down? Like, can I just watch? Can right. I just watch? Right. And it drives me crazy. And that, I think for me, what I would like to hope and believe is that that is less of a race thing and more of a, I just don't like people. No, it, I was just about to say, I, I think it's more of a classism thing than a race thing. It really okay. is. Okay. Because when and you, you know, were I've talking that about. I've too. I, yeah. am, I am classist. Like I said, I've been I working on it. <laughs> yeah, like, the, you know. It'd be the same thing if, like, like I said, there were some Karens up in there, and mm -hmm. then Polly Ann and Polly Sue from like downtown Mississippi came mm -hmm. in not knowing how to act, yeah. you know, rednecks. But you, get, you, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. straight up Southern, Southern, not Southern Belle, but like, yeah, like, but the South, it, you know, and South right, and with I'm like, an F. That, exactly. <laughs> Like, that yes. that's a classism thing because you could have that too yeah. with with black folks. You can have yes. your Southern Belle black folks, and you can have you know your Geechee Bellas. Like it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I agree. That's definitely um, class classist. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, so I think me, I but I'm going to go turn on my oven so I can start <laughs> heating up my dinner. So I'm gonna walk with it. My yes, my walk with it. I am mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I did want to touch on something else, not really related, but maybe a little bit. Um, so, and I want to, I'm probably going to talk to a couple more people about this, but choosing music for classes and performance. So I would say, I don't know that I've taken a ballet class where it wasn't classical music or at least something that wasn't so far off from being classical like what are your thoughts on and be it class or performance because like I've seen some of your work but on a bigger scope like music selection personally I think music for ballet I think when you start to get into that realm of like doing contemporary music to a ballet class that's a privilege, not a right. Mm. And it wasn't a privilege until I was, you know, at one of the top two highest levels of Washington School of Ballet, where we started doing that. And, and that was also when, like I said, Alonzo King lines and Yuri Killian and all of that was really starting to like take off. Yeah. Right. And so like contemporary had just become like a, a real thing in ballet, not in modern, but in ballet. Um, <clears throat> I 100% think that if you are coming and learning to become a ballerina, you are going to take a ballet class to classical music. That's it. In my opinion, I, I don't give on, I don't sway on that. When you have spent years training and you respect the discipline and you understand the discipline of ballet and you've earned that right, do your thing. 
go for it. But you can't, you can't, and, and my other thing is, you can't go on that contemporary track until you've spent some time in the original forte. Because if you can't do the original moves well, I don't know what you think them contemporary pieces moves gonna look like. Not contemporary ballet. They gonna look like, you know, America's Got Talent, which is great in and of its own right, but it's not again like, yeah. <laughs> it's not the same kind of quality training. And uh, yeah, that's, so that's just my two cents on that. So that um, brought up a question for me. So you're, you said specifically if you're training to become a ballerina. Like you're really like you're about this business of studying ballet. Now, would you apply that also for those who, let's say they're taking, like they're just at a regular studio, just taking like the rec track or they're yes. learning like in a public school setting. Yes. Across the board, you're saying? Across the board. I, mm-hmm. I think if you are starting out, and it doesn't mean if you're not going to become a ballerina. If you want to learn how to do ballet and do ballet well, you need to take ballet classes to classical music. And it has nothing to do with classism or being rigid in your frame of creativity. But King Louis, freaking ballet came with classical music. Like, it just, that's the way it came. Not to say that it can't expand and it can't go in a different direction. It can and it should. But I don't think you can just hop in that direction with, by bypassing mm-hmm. the original. Because the ori- like, it, it's just one of the, it's like, it's like saying you want to star in, I don't know that's a good experience because you can always fake it but it's like saying you want to want to become a kung fu master Mm -hmm. and you don't take the time to learn the original like moves you just want to start doing the tricks that you see jason statham doing on his action films yeah like it just doesn't work that way because it's like you're asking to fly without wings Mm that's how I view it. I view classical music in ballet class as the wings that you need to then venture out to the more like as Killian lines, contemporary stuff. Yeah. It, it just, to me, that's just how it, how it goes. Okay. So I thought I had another question for that. <laughs> Girl, my brain said, Nope, not today. That's all right. Um, <laughs> I tell you, it's it's just been crazy. But okay, so actually, no, that's what it was. So the I liked what you said about needing to have a grasp on the original before branching out. Um, now I I do understand that there are some who would disagree. Yes, yeah. but. Um, how I looked at it and how I've explained it to students is if you say you want to write a novel, but you have not learned how to write a sentence, how is that going to work out for you? (laughs) Like you have to have some grounding principles and some things have to just be in place. And once you have those things in place, then you can go, you know what, even better. I had um, a poetry teacher and this man took us through all these different types of poems and different ways to approach writing them. And then at the end, he was like, but you can also just throw all of it out. And we're like, so first of all, sir, you just had me do what? He was like, well, you have all of this information now. And so if you want to just, you know, take a piece from this, a piece from this, you can. If you want to do completely it in this form, you can. If you want to say, you know what, man, fuck all of that. I'm going to be over here doing my own thing. You can. But you do have this central information that you can always kind of circle your way back to as needed. Right. And so I think 
that there there is that importance in having that is to me it's a type of grounding um yeah. you know what this was always my favorite because so many people don't like you don't like improv <laughs> I don't like contact improv because some of these granola people be smelling. Fun. I love contact improv. (laughs) But with improv, (laughs) including contact, I would always fuss that, okay, but you still gotta hold your core. Like you still have to know where that is. Like, how can you be off balance if you don't know what balance is? How can you have all this? loose movement if you don't right. know where your center is you that have and to that's the thing home. yes that's the thing it's like well i want to do the pull off the hip and i'm like okay but you don't know how to releve oh. yes. uh, you, you want to do all of the stuff like i said that you see in like in the middle somewhat elevated but you ain't never been on point and you mm-hmm. don't know an out accent versus an in accent and the only clear way to understand that is if you're playing classical music that is so just like mm-hmm. or da-da-yum, 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 da-da-yum. like can you get that from jazz and hip hop and all of that absolutely but it's also so nuanced it's sometimes freaking hard to hear yeah. and if you want to find that classical strong basic form sorry that comes with classical music because it's not especially music we use for ballet class it's not overlaid with a lot of stuff beautiful mm-hmm. awesome amazing like inspirational stuff but stuff that i have found especially with young students learning it confuses them because they get laid they can't hear it and then they get lost and then they're like oh wait what was i doing it's like when the music is simpler then it's easier for them to focus Mm -hmm. on ball point in and in out and out and out you know it's just like yeah so I'm with you. And I think that 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 is a very good point that there is a I mean, some classical music be lit. I I actually really just enjoy classical music, (laughs) but there is usually for a lot of class. There is a I hate to use the word simplicity, but that's what I'm going to use. I can't think of nothing else. So there's a simplicity to it that to me forces you to figure out how to get this movement to be on the music like you have minimal distraction right. be with this here music right. find those accents right. um that i think to your point that it's not a you know correct me if i'm wrong that it's not so much a case of it can't be done to these other styles of music it's that it helps to strip down and strip away so you have a clearer understanding of the movement and how the movement can fit in with the music. That once you I, have I, yeah. that, then you can now take that bass and you can put it with anything else. Excuse me. I, I also, but I don't think the venturing out, and again, this is just me. I, mm-hmm. I can't speak for everybody because there'll be plenty of people who will say, well, you don't need technique to venture out. I think, that if you are trying to do contemporary ballet, contemporary point, you know, some of those things we've seen with black girls who do that awesome, like hip hop style of moving on their mm-hmm. point shoes. Yeah. I think that's amazing. But I can also tell that some of them have not spent enough time at the bar in sixth position, pulling up on their point shoes and like strengthening their ankles mm-hmm. enough to be able to do that without like cracking something, yeah. you know? And I think like, in my opinion, classical ballet is the the only, like, you cannot do contemporary ballet until you are strong at classical ballet. Because contemporary ballet is, a, is based off of the basics of classical ballet. It just yeah. is. It's not, it, you know, modern is different. You don't have to be good at Horton in order to do release or yeah. you know good at cunningham in order to do horton sort of thing like it is yes. uh, my headphones are dying but um do you, you understand i mean there's a lot more fluidity i said this is the beginning of our little chat ballet is rigid yeah. it, it is a construct it, it doesn't bend in that regard from a technique standpoint it just doesn't and i mean i you know not to be that person but i don't think it should 
Like and I think that there there is a value in it being what it is. And Can you hear I yeah. Okay, um I think there is a value in being able to say, okay, well, you really need to spend the time here because you know what? I have seen um some of the dancers doing that adding the hip hop who have definitely spent enough time. And I, when I tell you, they have a completely different look and I'm like, Oh, well, this is what it can be. I'm going to pay $60 for that. I ain't yes. paying 60 for that other thing. Mm-mm. So, like, like, yeah. So I, I, I wholeheartedly agree that when something is based on something else, you need to have some grounding in that original thing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to not, or just do something else. That's also an option. I don't know. (laughs) Not to be like that, but I mean, if you are so hardcore, I don't need technique to do this thing, then why are you doing something based on that technique? That's odd to me. And why are you asking for that art form to accept you if you're not willing Mm. to accept that art form's technique? And that like that and, and that to me is where I understand in some ways that sense of control that we don't want to give up. Because if somebody is coming in with the sole purpose to just be like, well, I want to do this my way, but I demand to do it my way in your frame of work and feel, I'm like, um, a new. No. <laughs> like, what Go do they do that own. at? Go. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wonderful thing about a democracy. <laughs> so like, you please, leave. <laughs> right. like, please leave. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, yeah. So I do understand that 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 yeah. the the power coming from that position I do get. Yes. So 100%. that that to me says that it is again a give and take. That and take. you know, yes, I if I am a practitioner of the original, then I need to have some leeway, some level of, I'm going to say the word acceptance, that things shift and change. Like that's just how things happen. But on the other side of it, if I'm coming in and I'm like, okay, I really want to push this somewhere else. I need to approach it from a place of respect that I understand this is what it is. And now I'm going to take this and on my own expand it somewhere else. And I think it's interesting, like that give and take you talk about, because when I was in a senior in high school, I went to um, San Francisco. Oh my God, I can't remember the name of it. But like one of the top um, contemporary schools for the summer intensive. I spent like six weeks in San Francisco. And we did not have a pianist for ballet class but proper we were still taking a ballet class and still learning proper technique but we were also at that age where we kind of could understand how to balance that mm-hmm. you know and so i i like i said there is a time and a place for it but if you're if you're 8 9 10 12 13 no yeah no <laughs> You, you you don't know your kneecap from your elbow yet, so no. <laughs> so, like oh, oh, poor baby, no. oh, precious lambs. <laughs> I'm sorry, especially for virtual classes. You know, teaching virtual classes, and sometimes it's like the I can see the kid clearly, but their connection is bad, so I've frozen. And so when I vocally am trying to tell them what to do, I'm like, no, no, yeah. no. Uh, no, that's your right leg. I said your arm, but the mm, okay. Let me be real. That was happening in the studio. <laughs> I was like, but, like, but, baby, that but I'm telling you, Maybe look in the mirror. <laughs> you know, some kids bless their hearts. <laughs> it's like, baby, that's not what I. I said. I, I said, ex- ex- extend your left arm, and you stepped on your right. I don't know how you got here, but that's not. Yeah. Yeah. Like bless so. the kids. Bless the kids. All right. Uh, well, you have any more questions for me, darling? Can I do like maybe one more? And then uh, I got to go. Oh, well, 
Perfect, because we can go ahead and jump to our ultimate dance trio. Mm-hmm. All right, so what are three of your favorite hair tips for class or performance, especially for those with curly, kinky hair? Um, all right, my number one hair tip, I think the most important, especially for girls who are, so if, no, it doesn't matter. If you're rocking relaxed hair, permed hair, pressed hair, or natural hair, I think it is so important to make sure that sometime throughout the day, you take it out. Because mm-hmm. we work so hard to slick it back and slick it back tight. And just for girls who have that different hair texture and it's sensitive to that much tension, it's mm-hmm. really important that you take your hair down every single night and get in there and massage your scalp and relax it because that tension is not going to be good for you in the long run, you know, with edges and breakage and all of that. Yeah. Um, that's my number one. Number two is to make sure that you take the time to properly wash and deep condition your hair and, you know, do your research and and figure out what is it, what's the best way to take care of your hair or your hair, not what you see other kids doing, but what you know works for you. I think that that's key. Mm -hmm. And I think the the third most important thing, especially now, is to not be afraid to advocate for your hair. Mm. I think now it is perfectly acceptable to walk up to your teacher and say, look, I know this might be the style that you want for this dance or that. My hair doesn't do that. And is there something else that we can do that you would find acceptable? Because while I very much so want to do, you know, what you're asking for, um, if that is going to, you know, cause damage or require me to do something that might not be healthy for my hair, I don't feel comfortable with that. Can I wear a wig? Can I, you know, is there something else? Is there another way that I can do, you know, because there have been times where I was like, I do not want to take this bottle of hairspray and shellac that in my freshly Dominican blow dried hair because I cannot wash it out because then I don't have straight hair anymore and I don't want to walk around for the next two weeks looking like I have lice because I've got all this residue from hairspray. (laughs) You know, it's like, it's like when you're trying to do what's asked of you and, and you just have those natural limitations. And I don't think anybody, any black woman especially should be forced to pick between healthy hair and the Mm -hmm. hairstyle that's being, you know, if they don't work together. It's different than you having, you know, your gorgeous, you know, tight curls and you going, I don't want to put my hair in a puff. I'm like, girl, you going to slick your hair back in a puff. I am letting you wear it in a puff. I'm not asking you to put the puff in a bun, but you will slick your hair, you know, like, yeah, but you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah I like think it's not, it's not a case of, well, I don't want to do this. It's a like, okay, how can we work with? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Marie, for joining us again. Thank you, friend. I'm going to go eat my dinner. And um, (laughs) yeah, you guys stay safe and healthy. And I don't care what Maryland or D.C. does. My ass ain't going nowhere. The girl, look, no, we gonna. I'm gonna let the first round of people go ahead and handle that. Okay. And live their best life. <laughs> let them live their okay. best life. Okay. Mm-mm. Not, not me, me in my house. That team is ready, <laughs> and I will come out. Okay. Exactly. Because we be around children who be around families, and I am not going to be part of that second wave. I did not save myself no. from this first wave of shenanigans to then get it in the fall. No, no. ma'am. Mm-mm. Now, my goal is to be able to go back to teaching, fingers crossed, but we don't need no problems before that. Zero. Zero. So I will stay here. Thank yes. you. All right. And thank you, everybody, for joining us again for this week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, Dance Talk Realness across all the platforms. Um, be sure to drop a comment, drop any questions that you have, any topics that you want me to cover. And I look forward to bringing you some new content next week. See you later. Bye.